Hello, brothers and sisters. Uh, this is not natural for me, but I'm going to try to do my best here. But I uh, just want to send a message out to the ward members. And we are praying for you and thinking of you all. Uh, as a Bishop Brick and a ward council, we've met this morning and uh, talked about needs of the ward and hope that we're meet, being able to meet those needs. And just a couple of updates within the ward. Um, the missionaries, uh, there's some changes there going on. Uh, to start with, Brother Cole Murray uh, will be going, coming home tomorrow, from what I'm understanding. Um, I need to verify that, but it will be uh, during this week. Um, and then uh, Matthew Robinson will be coming home on Wednesday. The missionaries will be quarantined for uh, 14 days, so it's, we cannot go and visit them. But if there are projects or thoughts uh, that people have to help occupy their time and to keep them occupied in something positive, that would be a beneficial thing. Uh, one of the thoughts has been to have some humanitarian opportunities there. Um, but if anybody has other thoughts, we'd be very interested in that. Bryant Israelson will also be coming home during the course of this week. Um, we have, I have not heard from Merrick Carter um, and what's happening there. Uh, he is in New Zealand. Uh, Wesley Edwards is confined to his apartment along with Renee, uh, my daughter. So uh, she's able to get out a little bit, but uh, they're, they do have some limited uh, means as far as getting out and, and visiting with people. So this is a challenging time for them, and I'd invite you to pray for them as well as the other missionaries, and, and uh, we'll talk more about prayer as I talk today. Um, President Walker this past week has expressed some thoughts on the sacrament, and I'm just going to read a couple of those thoughts. The long, longstanding objective of the church is to assist members to increase their faith and our Lord Jesus Christ in his atonement and to assist them in making and keeping their covenants with God and to strengthen and seal their families. In this complex world today, it is not easy. The adversary is increasing his attacks on faith and upon our families as at an exponential rate. This, uh, to survive spiritually, we need counter strategies to pro and proactive plans we are each responsible for our individual spiritual growth, and, spirits may, and uh, scriptures make it clear that parents have the primary responsibility to teach the doctrine to their children. It is the responsibility of, church, of the church to assist each member in the divinely divine goals uh, of increasing his or her gospel knowledge. Um, and I think this having this uh, family... Uh, centered gospel is a, a key part of that and having the sacrament in our homes uh, can play a big part of that if we uh, participate in that sacrament correctly and prepare ourselves for that sacrament. I think that we can actually learn and grow something that we sometimes miss when we partake of the sacrament on a normal basis. A couple of other thoughts on the sacrament. Um, this is some information from the church handbook. Every member needs the spiritual blessings that come from partaking of the sacrament. The handbook says, if members are unable to attend sacrament meeting because they are confined to home, nursing home, or hospital, the bishop may assign priesthood holders to prepare, bless, and, and paste, uh, pass the sacrament to these members. He may authorize such uh, a service only with his, within his word boundaries. The persons whom the bishop authorizes to conduct the service must hold the priesthood. He also must be worthy to bless and pass the sacrament. The priesthood holder who directs the service reports to the bishop when the service has been uh, held. And President Rounds has been doing a wonderful job at preparing uh, this and going through the ministers um, on the sacrament. But if you would each please contact him or you're welcome to contact me as well uh, that the sacrament has taken place in your homes and who was a participant in that sacrament so that that is being recorded as, the, as has been handed down to us from the church. With the COVID-19, the, the, uh, the, the First Presidency has uh, sent this thought, and I'm just going to read part of it. We know that God can strengthen us in our suffering and that His Spirit can offer peace and hope. Prayer is one of the ways that we have heard Him uh, in this and every moment of our lives. Our Heavenly Father uh, is mindful of us and can provide comfort and peace to all of us 
that may be suffering during this time. And I hope that if we are suffering, that uh, first of all, that we are praying, but they're also paying attention to one another and watching out for the welfare of our neighbors um, and family members. Uh, from President Irene, this is back uh, from April of last year's conference. Um, he talked about uh, some thoughts on prayer that I'd like to express. Um, in addition to your example of growing faith, your prayers as a family can play a critical part in making a home a sacred place. One person is usually chosen as voice to pray for the family. When a prayer is clear to God in behalf of the people kneeling and listening, faith grows in all of them. They can feel expressions of love for their Heavenly Father and for the Savior. When the person who prays mentions those who are kneeling in that circle who are in need, all can feel the love for them and each member of the family. Even when family members are not living in the home, prayer can build bonds of love. Prayer in the family can reach across the world. More than once, I have learned that a family member far away was praying for the same, praying at the same moment uh, uh, of things that I was for, uh, praying for. For me, the old saying, the family that prays together stays together, could be expanded to the family that prays together is together even when they are far apart. And I would like to express my thoughts that way with the ward. If we are praying together as a ward for a, a unity and for the needs of the, the ward, this will help our ward to become a, a stronger ward, especially in these difficult times. Along with that, uh, we need to know the, the challenges that you're facing. And as the ministers are asking you or others uh, what your challenges are, please express those. Uh, be willing to open up and allow others to pray for you and, and that we may all be unified in doing this. Um, another thought from President Nelson that I really like uh, on Revelation. If we, are, if we are to have any hope of sifting through the myriads of voices and the philosophies of men that attack truth, we must learn to receive revelation. In the coming days, it will not be possible to survive spiritually without the guiding direction and the comfort, uh, directing, comforting, and constant influence of the Holy Ghost. In this day, we really need the Holy Ghost to direct us in the things that are happening, to comfort us in the, the times of stress and anxiety that, that uh, we are all facing to different degrees. I know that God lives. I know that He is mindful of us, that He is at the helm and that our Savior has sacrificed for us, and He has prepared the way for us to be able to return and live with our Heavenly Father. I'm so grateful for that knowledge, and I pray that as we go through these times, that we may gain a straight, stronger relationship with the Savior and take the time to gain that spiritual nourishment that we all need. President Nelson is a prophet. We can see the, the guiding influence that he has given us with the many things that are happening in these last days. And we can see the Come Follow Me and how that was put together in the time that it was put together in preparing for this particular day, along with a lot of the other things that have transpired in this recent uh, past little while. Um, we are praying for you. Uh, we have a great love for you and, and concern for you and your well-being. Uh, please keep us to date on things that are happening in your lives. And I leave these thoughts with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.